biggest shots that Sanjit Budwa threw at him and he kept coming. That goes to show he's got one heck of a chin. You can't let Shamanan settle into rhythm, so Thapa needs to keep it mixed up. Clinch with him, take him down, make him struggle, make it a dirty, gritty fight. That's what he needs to do. I'm going to stir up an unspoken discussion here, and that is, it's not between Rahul Thapa or Shamanan. It's Team ICSA versus Warriors Bowl. I think both of these teams have a lot of great sheep in there. The last time when, when uh, Shah Manand fought Sanjeev, it was again against Warriors Cove MMA. Over to Jared for the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, hope you're ready for some bone-crushing, rare, naked, choking action. For this is the co-main event of the evening. This fight is scheduled in the featherweight division. First, we introduce the blue corner. His professional record, four wins, two losses. He weighed in at 65.80 kilograms. Representing VR and fighting out of Indian Combat Sports Academy. Ladies and gentlemen, Sham Adan! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. His record, four wins, one loss. He weighed in at 65.80 kilograms, representing Haryana, and fighting out of Warriors Cup, the Greek god, Rahul Tapa! Well, ladies and gentlemen, as the action begins, the referee for the fight, Herb D. All right, gentlemen, co-main event of the evening. Protect yourself at all times. Follow my instructions. We've been over the rules, so let's keep it clean. Touch gloves and let's do it. All right, let's look at the tail of the tape. This is the co-main event of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. Fighting in the featherweight division in the blue corner, we've got Shah Mana, 26 years of age, 181 centimeters in terms of height, and he's blocking horns with Rahul Thapa in the red corner, 29 years of age. Here we go. Shamanan in the white trunks, Rahul in the black and green. Co-main event time. Title implications, as always. Rahul Thapa, like, ready for war. And Rahul Chabra licking his lips. Uh -huh. Waiting to see who wins this fight. Waiting for the <laughs> lip smacking action that's going to unfold. These guys are both taking their time, feeling each other exactly, out. Yes. They know they can't make a mistake, an inch of a mistake can cost them the fight. They're both very powerful strikers. Trying to get in each other's space right now. And you know, I mean, look at the size of these of these guys. You won't believe they're featherweights. Right, I know. I was thinking the same thing. How much weight do they cut? Exactly. I mean, they can easily pass off as well, too. Nice. nice slow start to the fight, but like I said earlier, these guys are taking their time. Now, immediately, no setup, no straight in for that takedown. Because Shaman was right against the cage, he had nowhere to go, so I mean, what do you do? His strategy, if you didn't know it, was pretty clear from the start. You go and let Shaman and settle into a rhythm and start striking with you. Oh, beautifully done. Very technical, smooth takedown, taking on a strong guy like Shaman. Making it look effortless. And so early in the fight. So they're not even sweaty, they're not tired. They're just the start of the round, and this is literally the first takedown he's attempted. Shaman doing a good job of fighting off of his back, but he needs to get onto his feet. Now it's gonna be interesting to see how long will you know will referee Herb Dean wait and allow him to stay in a certain position. We talked about this in the Prajapati fight. The Prajapati initially he advanced, you know, he got the takedown, he got the double, pitched the leg, started working his way upwards. But over time he started slowing down. He didn't pass guard, he didn't look active. Well, this fight just started. Both fighters look very active to me. Yeah, um, no, all the refs here are international quality, international grade, you know. Yeah. I'm sure they know what they're doing. 
No, it is. And you can see Shaman and fighting off his back. Very, very oh. smartly. Oh, triangle. He might look for a triangle. He's got an arm trap. And immediately recognizing that, Raul Tapa shrugs it off and passes guard. He's trying to get into side control. Nice attempt there, but great defense, great recovery to get back up on top. I like the fact that Shaman is so early in the fight, is already threatening with submissions. It'll make Raul Tapa think twice before attempting a takedown. Nice ground and pound there by Raul, keeping the top position. Shaman is going to do a little bit of work. Some nice hand movement there by Shamanan, trying to fight position. Shamanan doing a good job keeping an open guard. He's, he's trying to lock his, he's trying to get a butterfly on the left hand side, trying to elevate his hips. But such great hips by Raul Tapa. Yeah, Raul did a great job. He's going to step wow. in, back in the neck. So that's why he stopped. Don't step in. Stops him, so you cannot hit at the back of the neck. Oh, yeah. oh I, did, I didn't see that. I didn't see that elbow at the back of the head. Tried to use that butterfly guard to lift him, but it didn't work. Back to full guard now, pushing against the face. This guy is so space. strong. These guys are so strong. It must be so. And the hips are so good. It's so difficult to elevate him from this position. And Raul Tapa doing a great job by pushing him up, but Shaman and smartly turns away from the cage. He's going to look to wall walk. Shaman is doing a great job of fighting off his back. He's actually doing more work than Rahul. Rahul seems to be just holding position. And, and her being watching. Interesting. These guys, of course, are constantly jockeying for position. It's offense and defense constantly. And this is the kind of grappling, this is the level of grappling that we're seeing now in Indian MMA. Is that camp, that Warriors Cove camp has brought out such great wrestling from all these fighters. I think the refs should step these guys up pretty I soon. Just I mean, not too much. I mean, not a lot of action, but 30 seconds remaining in the round. And Tapa, maybe, you know, it's a strategy at the end of the day. You've got to realize this. You know, you, you win one round, you take the wind out of your opponent a little bit. You know, his hands get a little heavier in round two. And that's when he probably might open up at the striking. It's smarter. you got to be smart about conserving your energy, for sure. It's a three-round... Five for the fight, gets a tenth. Good round. I mean, that was a technical fight in round number one. Papa definitely, you know, took uh, Shamanan down. However, it was very technical, wherein Shamanan was also fighting off his back. No, incredible fight, incredibly technical fighter, and great strategy by Raul Tapa. He knew he didn't want to stand with Shamanan. He didn't hide his intentions. He's like, I'm going to just take you down. Pulled him up, pushed him up against the cage, got that takedown and controlled him for the rest of the round. But great defense from Shaman. He rolled around, he rotated, he defended effectively, even threw up a potential triangle to let his opponent know that, you know what? I've got a repertoire of submissions as well. Slip up and I might just catch you. Let's look at the unofficial stats here. Shamanan dominating when it comes to head strikes, and it's Rahul you know, when it comes to dominating in the ground strikes. But would have been interesting to note that Rahul was dominating in terms of ground time. I think most of the, all the strikes were landed on the ground. There were no stand, there were just, there were those standing strikes. But here we go. We might see a different game plan and strategy here from Shamanan. One thing I got to say: both these guys are so ridiculously conditioned. Neither of them are breathing heavily. I mean, we've been talking about flyweight as the most stacked division. I think it's featherweight, it's stacking up. We've got, we've got excellent fighters here. And let's look at how these guys battle it out in round number two. Both fighters are getting starting off slow, taking their time, a lot of respect for each other. Nice leg kick. Very nice leg kick. No kick. You can see a sense of urgency now, trying to take the center of that cage. And he wants, he, does, he wants to make sure that he doesn't have his back pushed up against Yeah, it was kind of a surprise to see that first round start the way this Shaman and came out really slow. Normally he starts off fast, but this time a little different, you know? You just see how smartly Raul slowly inching in that real estate, taking away some land from Shaman and oh. finds himself again with his back against the gate. But this time in a much better position. He's got underhooks on both sides. 
Well, he sensed it closing in, sensed Raul closing in, so... Look at him grimace as he tries to break hold of that grip. This just goes to show you how important wrestling is. The better Absolutely. wrestler determines where the fight goes. Exactly. If, he, if he wants to take you down, he'll take you down. If he wants to stand, he'll keep you standing. So wrestling is crucial. And I like the fact that Shaman is, you know, he's, he's staying active from the bottom. He's landing some good elbows, some good strikes, constantly jogging. He's not letting him tee off. Yes, uh, Raul has got the takedown. But beyond that, he's not letting him pass guard. He's not letting him get to a dominant position. Certainly not letting him land any ground and pound so far. Yeah, he's doing a good job fighting off his back. I'd like to see a little bit more aggressive movement from Raul. I know you want to maintain the dominant position, but don't just hold on to him all the entire fight. Try to put some shots in there. Yeah. Try to make a submission, you know, like work and, a little you know, bit. You know, that's that's where the argument, that's where the entire conversation starts about risk versus reward. At what point do you realize that, okay, you know, I'm controlling the guy, and if you're good enough to control him, you start taking some chances. You start taking some risks, you start posturing up. Yes, you might lose a position, but you know, it, it, you as a fighter, you've been in this position many times, and you've taken some chances, sometimes you won, sometimes you lost. But how important is that for that to work? It's all about risk management and conserving your energy at the end of the day. You want to be smart about it, but Herb Dean stepping in, clapping his hands, saying, do some action, do some work, you know? Because the yeah. fight fans want to see some blood, baby. Yeah, I mean, the fans are on their feet and they're watching, and I'm seeing the most, the bigger shots being landed from the bottom by Shaman. And, and Raul Tapa posturing up, landing one shot and then getting back down, staying in the same position. Herb Dean's going to stand these guys up anytime now. That's what I'm saying. Shaman is doing a better job from the bottom, attacking, throwing more strikes. Rahul's just kind of maintaining the top position. And he needs to posture up and just land some. Damn it, there you go. Throws him off instantaneously. And now, Shaman with a sense of urgency. You can see Raul Tapa's nose is cut from one of those elbows. And big Shaman knee coming. A good job framing up against Rahul, creating that space. Not letting Rahul take him down. Rahul's trying to close the gap, but good frame with the elbow there on the forearm. His neck. Nice knee. Very nice knee to the body there. And he's created a good amount of space. He's not going to let him tap up. And Herb Dean a little more urgent now with his warning. Well, Rahul's just pushing oh, up against the fence. There you go. There you go. Really doing much. He looks exhausted. Rahul, yeah, Rahul seems a little Rahul worse is, for wear here. Rahul is a bit cut here. But that's from one of the elbows from the ground that Shamanan was actively throwing. Again, no nice leg kick. kick. Bit of a deep breath from Raul Tapa there. Well, it takes a lot of energy to hold a guy like Shaman about. Shaman's strong, man. And he like, looks for his weight, look for his size, for his weight. But it's, it's, he Shaman looks like a man is loading up his right hand and he pulls in. I think that's, that's going to be devastating. If, if Shaman lands a big right hand, it's going to be devastating. We've seen it happening at previous editions of MFN. But you know what's funny? Burns. I've never seen Shana Ahmed fight on the back foot so much. Yeah, he's getting... He's definitely fighting on the back foot, not pressing forward like he normally does. Raul Tapa has got that weird, you know, he's got that weird approach where he's slowly, slowly taking away his space. And he's not throwing strikes, he's not pressuring, but he's pressuring in a weird way. And Shaman, I think, is a little tentative to let go, knowing that it can come at any point. But it's, it's it now boils down to Z. You know, there's scoring in position and then there's scoring for activity in position. Well, I think judges scored the fight in two he's he's of the seat. And that was the nice first defense. Take. Very nice defense. Didn't let him be taken down. Shaman is showing a lot of power, a lot of strength. And Shaman, I, I wish he goes back and lands more of those low leg kicks. Because those were doing, you know, those will stop him in his tracks. Or you can even look for that uppercut when he steps in. Good round, good round. You guys definitely have a lot of respect for each other. It's going to be exciting to know how judges would score this fight if it goes to the decision. I mean, you know, if, if it's, you know, there are two kinds of judges. There's judges who will score, who would be more wrestling biased and then... You know, it's very objective, but ideally how it's supposed to score it's is... Objective and it's score. It's score in, in favor of the fighter who's looking to finish the fight. Let's look at the highlights here. Rahul Dapa again trying to push Shamanan against the fence, trying to lock in that takedown and gets it. And Shaman is grimacing every time he got taken down. The amount of force that Raul Thapa is bringing into that takedown is he shows his strength in that position. 
But it's just, you know, it, at this point, it's, it's Shamanand is will, in the third round. I'm sure his corner is going to tell him that, listen, what are you going to go for broke now? Because at this point, Raul Tapa, I don't know what he's, you know, wrestlers are the most conditioned athletes, I feel. And he'll be ready for another round. As per the stats of round number two, Shamanand again collecting brownie points by landing those volume of strikes from his back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is MFN 15. This is the co-main event, and we are heading to round number three. If you're just joining us, Raul Tapa in the black trunks, and Shamanan in the white trunks. This is the third and final round. Nice one, two gets through. Very nice one, two. Tapa, I, you know, I'm, I'm just I'm kind of if Shamanan three times an uppercut. You throw those jabs. Very nice one-two combinations. Sometimes going back to the bread button. Oh, very nice return fire from Tapa now. But Tapa needs to strike here. I would love to see him land a one-two-three. You know, one-two with the leg kick followed Sean, up. Sean, 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 this is made in this jab and then he's all set to throw in a right hand. And so smart now. So smartly. Oil check. He was baiting him in with that. Try to get him an oil check then. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but this is what I'm, this is what you know we talk about wrestling is such a crucial part of the sport and has become the best base for mixed martial arts. Right, and you see that Rahul was just baiting him with that one two, one two, letting him take those shots, getting Sham comfortable, getting him distracted and not worried about the take that then shot it, took it over, got the top position, right where it needs to be. Mount and Shamanan here is trying to push his hips off, but now Raul Tapa is going to pin him up against the cage and look to land some vicious ground and pound. Great got top control here by Raul. Full mount, but once again, he's just holding the position. I don't see him trying to Yeah, I mean, you, you, know, you know, we saw this similar with the Prajapati fight. In the third round, he had the oh. top position. And you know, uh, there, there are points that will get scored for, for strikes on the bottom. But in mount, it's very difficult to score against the fighter who's in top position. And you're right, Jason, you know, it's, it, it's, it's the activity in this position. You know, you know you've got mount. Yes, you've got a dangerous fighter who's going to buck his hips the minute he gives you some space. So what do you think from this position? You know, do you look for a submission at this point? Do you look to wrap up an arm, a leg? I know it's easier said than done, especially knowing that you're two rounds in the books. Well, it's very actually difficult to control somebody like that. No, so it's, it's kudos it's, to doing that, number it's one. Impossible. It just makes it kind of boring for the average fan. That's yeah, all. no, I mean, you know, a lot of fans in the audience are now educated fans right. that are cheering the guard passes. Right, exactly. They're cheering the reversals. That goes to show that fans are getting educated about the sport. I remember back in 2012 when George St. Pierre started passing guard in Canada the fans would cheer for a card pass. Maybe they're reaching that point in Indian MMA where fans are getting educated about the sport. No, absolutely. You can see that they're understanding it a lot better, which is a great thing. Nice. Beautiful oh, escape out the back door. Right again. Right Looking for the guillotine. Right, he's got a single leg here. And he's I think he's got his neck though. Raul's got a good neck control. Tapa gets out of that comfortably, but now Shaman with a massive sense of urgency. He's got a minute and a half remaining in this fight to make something happen. Raul's just biting down on his mouth guard and guarding up with those one twos. It doesn't even affect him, it looks like. No, he's, his guard is up. He's not piercing him. Oh, there nice. you go. Good, good mix one, up. two, three. That's what we're talking about. One, two, three, and he's changing the angle as well. He's to cut a corner and hit the body. But you know, hang on, they're not his coaches. <laughs> it looks like Raul's just waiting for him to set it up for another takedown. Uh, he's going he's gonna to change levels in a second. And I wish he'd time it with a knee oh. uppercut, you know? Right again. You know, the previous fight, we saw Pavan Mahan use that uppercut so effectively against Sadiq there. And I, you know, that's a weapon that a lot of fighters have used. Boom! Boom! Straight to the ground with a minute left. There's that wrestling we talk about, man. If someone can take you down to the ground, it's over. I mean, no it's matter how much hard you have, no matter how much technique you got, you're nullified. Everything goes. It's not. I mean, it's not pretty. You know, it's not the prettiest thing to watch. 
but it's one of the most effective forms. You've seen great wrestlers of the do it. And sure, but you know, you know wrestling is such an effective part. And you watch, Rahul Thapa tonight showed, showed respect to Shamanan by sticking to a game plan that's not exactly crowd friendly. But he knew he had to win. He had that much respect for Shamanan's hands. Yeah, the Warrior Cove guys seem to have a game plan and they stick with it. I think yeah. they like their ground and pound. They like their they take they them ground down ground and keep talking to All of them have been successful. Let's go, hit it. Yeah, for sure. Hey, if it's not, not broken, don't fix it, right? Exactly. I mean, take a playbook out of someone else's game, it's all good. Mark, Mark, Mark. Clinical finish from Rahul Thapa. He put on a show, controlled his opponent, and showed why wrestling is one of the most dominant forms of martial art in MMA. Shaman and the upside, but you know what? That's the nature of the sport. You've got to defend that takedown, you've got to defend it. And if you can't defend it, the wrestler will take control. Brilliant performance. Bahadhi Prabhav Shali performance here Rahul Thapa ke dwara. You know, round me koshish yehi ki Shaham Anand ko striking na karne dein, unko ground pe leke jayen, aur wahi pe dominate kare. चलिए देखते हैं हाइलाइट यहां पे शाम ने वन टू पे का राहुल ने कहा नहीं लगी भाई कोशिश करो चल गार्ड कर लिया और वहां पे उसके बाद दोबारा एक और अटेम्प्ट राहुल थापा द्वारा टेक डाउन लेने की और उसके बाद माउंट ले लिया और बिल्कुल भी निकलने नहीं दिया शामानंद को शामानंद कोशिश it was all about Rahul Thapa controlling the fight. It was all about Rahul Thapa's wrestling. Exactly. And, you know, again, like, I, it, it was the solid game plan. They stuck to a plan. They showed respect to Shamanan by very his striking when they realized that you don't want to get into that kind of slugfest with Sham. It's a lot of difficult to score for the judges. So let's see how judges have scored this fight. Jared, over to you. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action here at Noida in the stadium, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges scored about 30-27 for your winner by unanimous decision, Rahul! And what a smart fight, Rahul. Everyone just kept seeing the same thing. The technicality of this was fantastic. Great by a cornerman also there. Almost every second was being discussed over there. So it was a really, really good, well-planned fight. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was very, very planned fight because this guy is very strong and like one of the best in this uh, division. One of the best in the country. So if I have to be on the top, I have to take out the people who are the best so that I can climb the ladder to be the best. And I like the way that you took away a lot of his attacking parts also. But this is great. Is this how your training was always? Were you watching his videos and saying that I don't know exactly what to do with him? There was no ego in your fights. You know, that was amazing to see that. Yeah, 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 I know because I saw this guy. He's very good. He has very strong head. Like his hands are of like stone. He was hitting me so hard. But I was still taking it because there was only one thing going in my mind. I, I have to beat this guy. I, I have to beat this guy anyhow. He can hit me as, I, as hard as he can. But he cannot beat my will or like take away the, the power that God has given me. He cannot take this away from me because that's what God wants. Yeah, and well, man, you deserve every bit of it. It was a unanimous decision. Well done, Rahul. Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. When the right technique and the right thought happens, it will win. Yes. And now, and now, I think, I feel like now, now, ma'am, uh, Aisha ma'am, Krishna ma'am, now I think I, deserve a shot at the title. MFN 145 and yes, title. Now I think I have to, I have been there. Now it's up to you if you have to give me that shot or not. Because I think I, I now deserve that shot at 155 title. 145, sorry. The number of requests that Aisha ma'am and Krishna have got today for whether it's MFN 16 or title shots is crazy. We're going to go back on the drawing board and check it out. But enjoy your win. 
Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Rahul Dabba came and he was on point. Back to the cops.